Well, a good morning to you. Welcome. You're right in time for Morning Prime as we bring you up to speed with the latest news making headlines. My name is Jesse Rogers. Thank you for making time on this 11th day of January 2022. We're less than seven months to the general election scheduled for August 9th. And of course, a lot of developments happening in the political field. As you've just seen, on the front page of the standard one of the stories covered is what is set to happen in the senate today they are convening for a special sitting even as a showdown is looming as they're set to discuss the controversial coalition's bill as they convene for that special sitting i mentioned uh, not a lot of debate expected even as the jlac committee in the senate is set to pick up uh, the bill and perhaps push it forward for uh, public participation but equally we expect a showdown even as members of parliament allied to deputy president are expected to raise a couple of amendments which they say they're fighting back in terms of the unconstitutionality of the bill but those allied to president uhuru kenyatta and odm leader rilo dinga are definitely confident that they have the numbers and the bill will sail through so a lot more expected in the course of the day in regards to that but equally we'll take a look at some of the other stories remember Senator of Meru, Mithika Linturi, said to be arraigned in court today, even as the prosecution was seeking for at least seven more days to finalize on the investigations. The court is set to rule on that particular application and will definitely inform you, according to the judge, she mentioned at around 9.30. So give or take around that hour, we'll definitely keep you up to speed with how the court pronounces itself on that particular matter but still on the front page of kenya's ball newspaper the standard if you can have it on our screens right now and just take you through some of the top stories that have been covered i've just hinted on some of them and there you have it ruto feels heat over linturi whips allies where the senator mythical linturi is on the sport but just yesterday we saw the deputy president move to tame hate speech in the uda rallies even as he sort of took an ap apologetic tone yesterday in terms of the remarks that were made by the Meru senator. That's even as the court detains the senator overnight and the magistrate, as I mentioned, is set to give more orders today. And just below there, we have a couple of quoted leaders, one of them the deputy president, where he said yesterday, our institutions charged with ensuring that we have a peaceful country should not create two sets of laws for two sets of groups. Linturi has withdrawn and apologized. The Nakuru chief magistrate yesterday mentioned she, that she doesn't want to be accused of politicizing the case by sitting beyond 5 p.m. And that's why she took a break from the court proceedings and we'll see uh, more proceedings today. Even as Member of Parliament Aden Dwale is quoted saying, I want to ask the criminal justice system and the National Cohesion and Integration Commission to apply the law equally when dealing with hate mongers. And that's one of the key things we'll be discussing about if the selective application when it comes to reeling in on hate, hate speech statements on political podiums. And remember, Kitutu Chache, Member of Parliament, Onyonka, is definitely still facing investigations as the DPP recommended investigations onto some terms he mentioned during the weekend as he was campaigning. Well, those stories definitely on major focus on the standard page eight right there. But as I mentioned, page nine is focusing on the big battle in terms of the party's bill that will definitely be in the Senate today. A lot more expected later on in the course of the day. But other stories, including the hand of God that saved the gold miner who was trapped for 72 hours underground. That's on page three of the standard. And he's definitely in good health, was taken back home, and he was just recuperating from, you know, nausea, lack of water, fatigue, and hunger and thirst so it's definitely good news right there on page three even as kenyans continue raising questions there's yet another gold miner who's still trapped i think it's over 37 days and counting and that's definitely unfortunate news right there as the families reeling from uh, you know mixed of emotions 
but uh, more details on the standard. Let me just hold up the Daily Nation. This is what you can expect in today's edition of the Daily Nation. They go big with the economy this time round, as I can show you. More Kenyans sink into poverty. That's according to that report by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. And it seems the new report shows the number of Kenyans living in poverty has jumped by 15 percentage points between 2014 and 2018. So the poverty levels have definitely gone higher according to the statistics released by KNBS and that's definitely a cause of concern but equally they highlight some of the key areas the Jubilee administration has really um, sort of uh, made progress in in terms of healthcare as well the doctor to patient ratio more details on page seven of the daily nation interestingly they equally cover what Raila mentioned yesterday in terms of divisive politics and he was pointing a blaming finger towards the DP's camp equally Linturi spends the second night in police cells Page six of the Daily Nation covers that story and some of the statements that have been made sort of castigating also. So those are some of the major stories covered on the Daily Nation, the back page going big with what the CS for Education Magoha has mentioned. Expect an easy KCPE and a KCSE examination. And he's mentioned we are a considerate government and will be humane as possible. We want our students to relax. Remember, it will be a busy examination calendar. I think six examinations, including the KCPE, KCSE, and the grade six assessment. They're all scheduled for this year. And the CS for Education, Magoha, sort of pleaded with politicians not to disrupt the education calendar, even going further to perhaps urge the next administration to stick to the examination calendar as it has been broken down by the Ministry of Education. So those details and much more covered in today's daily. So make sure you grab yourself a copy. Of course, we'll get to discuss most of these stories in totality with my panel a little bit later on during the broadcast, just to break it down in terms of the proceedings expected in the Senate, equally taking a look at the latest in terms of economy and perhaps the intrigues within the political circle. But apart from that, let's take a look at some of the stories covered on the international scene, even before we talk about the local stories. So the citizen, first of all, the latest happening in Tanzania. President Samir right there, why I dropped Kabudi and Lukuvi. Find out more on that and how she will assign a new individuals to those positions even as seven police officers are charged with theft of 1.165 billion kenya shillings well that's definitely a cause of concern right there where the accused were arraigned in court on monday and were charged with those uh charges now tulia axon joins the race to replace ndugai as the speaker of parliament that's the deputy speaker currently who is becoming the fourth candidate to join that race. Remember, the former Speaker Ndugai sort of rendered his resignation letter to the CCM party right there in Tanzania after a public spat with the president in terms of the public debt issues in Tanzania. Find out more on that, even as they speculate on who will succeed Ndugai, Ndugai rather, as Speaker in the uh, parliament. That's the latest from Tanzania. Let's shift focus over to Uganda, the latest covered on the Daily Monitor. 13 years of insecurity on the northern bypass, where over the years police have deployed patrols and erected booths on the bypass, trying to curb criminals who are using the road to orchestrate uh, the criminality. More details on that. DPP withdraws charges against Bobby Wine, and in his suit, find out more on how Bobby Wine has been acquitted, how schools influenced reopening of old Toad Pack. But equally interestingly, I think one of the developing stories in Uganda, touching on the schools that are being reopened after a break of close to two years due to the COVID-19 pandemic. That and much more covered on the Daily Monitor. Let's cross over to Rwanda today just briefly. Echoes Cats Mali off over military coup 
That's one of the major stories covered there, where effective immediately money is cut off entirely from all ECOWAS institutions. That's according to the blog. Find out why, even as China detects more Omicron cases, as cities tighten restrictions. Schools have reopened, but where are teachers and classrooms? That's one of the major questions being raised on the Rwanda today. Uh, papers, even as inaction against corruption, alarm bells in public offices. Those are some of the stories covered on Rwanda today. Just perusing some of these headlines. Let's cross over to CNN International and of course the number one tennis player Novak Djokovic and his issues with Australia where Djokovic won his court case but few Australians are cheering and for many the problem wasn't the paperwork of the men's tennis world number one. It was whether he considered himself above the country's pandemic rules. Find out more on that, even as Canada is deemed very high risk for travel and a convicted murderer and millionaire Robert Dust has just passed on. Find out more. Those are some of the developments happening around the world, equally in the United States, where the judge has asked why Trump was silent during the Capitol riot. A lot more to do in terms of the investigations around the insurrection that happened over a year ago. Those are some of the major developments happening around the world. So back home, as I mentioned, a lot of focus will be on the Senate as they are set to convene for a special sitting to debate the controversial coalition's bill. We'll definitely get to highlight some of those proceedings on the floor of the House later on in the course of the day. But equally, it's not just the only political development happening. A lot of uh, movement by the top political leaders just yesterday. Ruto was in Bomet, and uh, we definitely saw a uh, local rivalry playing out during that particular meeting. The front page of the standard sort of highlights his Meet the People tour at the Bomet Green Stadium yesterday, even as we wait for the court to pronounce themselves on the matter of Meru Senator Mithika Lunturi. We expect the judge to make the statements as of 9.30 today. So a lot to discuss about with my panel. Allow me to introduce them after that long intro. I'm joined in studio right here next to me by Makali Mulu, who's a Kitui Central Member of Parliament. It's great to see you, sir, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Jason. Now, how are the people of Kitui Central? Kitui Central is fine. Okay. We are happy that we have the rains. Okay, that's really proper. It's great to see you. I'm equally joined by Godfrey Osotsi on the other side of studio, nominated Member of Parliament. It's great to see you, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Jesse, and Happy New Year to all the viewers who are watching us this morning. Well, thank you for your time. Equally, James Gakuya, Embakasi North Member of Parliament. Karibu, Meshimiwa, Santi for your time, and good morning. Uh, good morning to you, Jesse. Uh, Happy New Year. And uh, also Happy New Year to the viewers, wherever they are watching us from. Okay, a little bit later on, we'll be joined by nominated Senator Isaac Moura from our city center studios. Well, I understand he's already with us. Well, he's definitely usually on time. Senator Mora, it's great to see you. Karibu sana. Happy New Year. It's been a while since we hosted you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jesse Roberts. And I'm also very happy to be on this show. And uh, I received greetings from many places, including uh, Kiambu and Roiro. Uh, definitely. And perhaps you can start with you, Senator, for obvious reasons. But it will be a busy day on the floor of the House today as Senators are convening for that special sitting to equally have their say on the controversial coalition's bill. And as I informed our viewers, page 9 of the standard breaks down what you can expect in terms of the battle lines that have been drawn as the Senate convenes on the coalition's bill. Senator, are we expecting a couple of amendments from your side of the divide in terms of this coalition's bill? What do you expect on the floor of the House today? Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, I want to also uh, say hi to all my colleagues, uh, Makali Mulu, uh, who is served in the National Assembly, Godfrey Osotsi, who we have had uh, similar tribulations of being expelled from the party, and uh, interestingly, seven cases each, uh, and also my brother James Rakuya, who we share a political mind. I, th I think um, it's very clear uh, that uh, today is the day the senators will also have to debate this law, I honestly don't think there is a hurry 
and I don't know why uh, Parliament has had to be convened uh, during recess to discuss it. It should, it should just have been prioritized uh, on the first week of February or thereabout and still have gone through. Uh, so today, uh, what is uh, before us uh, in the Senate uh, is a first reading. It's what is listed in the order paper, uh, and it remains to be seen because just uh, first reading for those who may not understand is just mentioning that a bill has been introduced. It will be a conveying of a communication from the speaker, or we say communication from the chair, about um, a, you know message from the National Assembly. And it remains to be seen whether we shall have an amendment in terms of procedure uh, so that we go to the second reading of the debate, especially because now committee has to consider, uh, you know, this bill and table a report. I'm not very certain that that has actually been done. Uh, so there will be, a, there will be pro a procedural motion, particularly on how to go about it, because uh, uh, the Justice, Legal Affairs and Human Rights Committee of the Senate will have to also give its report uh, uh, during the second reading uh, so that then the mover uh, who is usually the chair can have an opportunity to uh, highlight the key you know, aspects of the bill but from our end uh, we of course we shall seek to have amendments uh, on various matters uh, for example the definition of a, a political party uh, who deems uh, and who has the powers uh, to determine who has defected from one party to another who, why would you want for example to have a registrar uh, with a lot of powers to determine a political party ideology, uh, the issues around how to share, you know, uh, monies amongst political parties, uh, and, and generally even uh, meddling with internal party affairs like uh, registrar determining the register uh, uh, and uh, uh, on who has transferred from one party to another, and also who are the agents of a political party. I think that's a bit too much. But I also want to say this, uh, uh, my brother Jesse. Yeah. Uh, the party nominations aspect are really, they have borrowed from my bill, the party primaries bill, which Dr. Makali Mulu uh, has participated in its making, but it's still in the first reading in the Senate. I wish that bill was passed as it is because it's a very progressive bill rather than just uh, stealing ideas here and there, and yet they've not really gotten the whole uh, gamut of what is supposed to be done. So really, it's, it's a bill that we shall discuss. I honestly think uh, you should not make laws uh, because of Azimio. Uh, I call it as Mio La Kuzimia. Uh, you need to make laws that are longer lasting. If it's about coalitions, don't just make it for the expediency. You want to force people to join uh, your side of the political divide, and you, you say you must have done a coalition six months before elections. Uh, why? I mean, why? We have always seen coalitions from even a month to elections. So uh, if you have a coalition law, call it what it is. I mean, call a spade a spade, uh, but do not force people through a legislation. Uh, to join your political side of the divide. Well, those are interesting. We definitely expect uh, rife engagements on the floor of the House as senators take to this bill. And he's just broken down the process, at least for today. Thanks for that, Senator. But even as you've highlighted uh, some of the issues uh, that the DP's allies will want amended, the provisions granting sweeping powers to the Registrar of Political Parties in the conduct of party nominations. Let's talk about deleting Clause 22, Senator Maura, just briefly. Well, what's your issue with the involvement of the Registrar of Political Parties when it comes to party nominations? Because if this bill becomes law, parties will be required to seek uh, certified copies of their membership lists uh, that are used for nominations. And th that doesn't seem to be... Uh, to have any issues at all. Well, what's your issue with that? No, no, not at all, because uh, remember right now, you have, you've been running ads about <clears throat> people being t uh, told to go to e-citizen okay. uh, to verify their party membership. And uh, there has also been this behavior by political parties uh, going to m shops and taking details of uh, those who have done some transaction and using that to register. In fact, you'll be surprised. There are about 78 million uh, party members. Yet Kenyans, we are actually less, uh, maybe about 50 million. So that means there is a double registration of people uh, into political parties. And then if you give uh, political parties, uh, the, uh, the registrar of political parties, who is an appointee of the executive, by the way, and it's a whole, there's a whole uh, process that was not very transparent uh, the last time this happened. 
uh, I was involved so I can tell you for sure, uh, then you are actually giving undue advantage to the status quo, to the powers be, to what we call deep state and system, uh, to determine whether uh, you know, Jesse Roberts belongs to this political party or not. And especially because there is a clear uh, difference between party members and party supporters. And because of the shifting political alliances, for example, you, you, you have just said I am an, an ally of the deputy president, but uh, we all belong to the Jubilee party as at now in terms of political party uh, membership. But people have since shifted. There are people who are in Jubilee who are supporting ODM. There are those who are in Jubilee who are supporting UDA. There are those who are in Jubilee who are supporting ANC. And you can say it like that. And other political parties as well. So if you give that power uh, of the, for the registrar to determine the party register to be used in party nominations, you are as well giving the registrar control of, uh, of the party primaries because uh, then she may have the power to say, uh, Maura does not belong to this political party, but Jesse Roberts belongs to this political party. So okay. it's very, very uh, interesting because what political uh, parties have been doing, Jesse, is to either use the party register, especially for nascent political parties, and or use the IABC register. And in strongholds, let's say, for example, Waipa in Ukambani, you don't to say, you can't stop people from coming to vote uh, on party nominations, party primaries. Uh, because they didn't register as wiper members, yet they actually support maybe the party leader from there. So those are the kinds of politics that we do not want to have, a situation where uh, a registered political party is misused uh, to settle political scores, and she has been used very ably, and personally I've been a victim of her machinations. Okay, okay, well noted, Senator. Let's cross over to Makali Mulu just briefly. Well, what's your take, even as we expect senators to debate on the political party's bill? Yeah, thank you, thank you very much, Jesse, and good morning, viewers, mm -hmm. and my colleagues. Uh, you know, listening to Maura, <laughs> Jesse, Maura, we've been together in uh, Parliament and more so the 11th Parliament, where we were all first timers and we had serious debate in the chamber. Uh, what is likely to happen in the Senate, Jesse, is unfortunate because from what Maura is saying, I can see. Instead, instead of members of parliament focusing on the, the context of the bill, or what I would call the objective of the bill, or the import of the bill, they, they seem to be already to be divided on party lines even before we start. And uh, what I hear Maura saying is the issues which were being pushed by the, the, the amendments which were being pushed by uh, the older allied members of parliament. Mm -hmm in the National Assembly are likely to come up in the Senate. So as I see a situation where the same template used by Yuda friendly members of parliament in National Assembly is likely to be handed over, that template is likely to be handed over to the, to, to the senators mm -hmm. so that they push and get to see whether they can get it through. But what, what, what we, we must note just is the fact that uh, the Senate is discussing a bill which has already been passed by the National Assembly. So it means if they push for any change into that bill and the change goes through at the Senate, then it has to come <coughs> back to the National Assembly and if we don't agree with their changes, then we go for mediation. Mm -hmm. uh, I see that happening because they are likely to be pushing for that so that they, they, they take more, more time to delay the process. The, the truth of the matter is they don't want this bill to go through because of their own reasons. And I've said in the past that what is happening in this bill, and I, the reason why I'm so happy to see Maura in this, this panel is because Maura and myself, at one point we engaged the, the, the regional political parties in Jesse yeah. to discuss the issue of party nominations. Mm -hmm. Because it's a very thorny issue in this country. Politicians, serious politicians have had their careers killed okay. through party nominations. And if you look at this bill, you know, the problem we have is most people are just focusing on the clause we are talking about party coalition. But just looking through this bill and having listened to the members of parliament and myself debate this bill, there are actually some very progressive proposals, which I think are, as a country we need just to adapt. For example, the last issue Maura just discussed, the, the, the issue of party members participating in the party nominations, and not everybody. You know, what, are, what has been happening in the past, Jesse, is that when party nom nominations are called, and they are called in different days, what would happen is that uh, if I'm a strong wiper candidate, my opponents who are in the other parties will gang and say, at the nomination level, 
Let's make sure that the strong candidate will never go through. So they gang against you and kick you out at the nomination level. So what happens? They remain with a very weak party candidate, not as a result of a fair process, okay. but as a result of a conspiracy where they have agreed to do this. And then once they get over that handle, then they come and defeat the strong, the weak candidate now of that party. Mm -hmm. It's a way of indirectly or through the back door getting to power. And I think what we are saying is, just what's wrong? For example, why am I a party of why am I a member of Wiper? Okay. I'm a member of Wiper Party because I believe in Wiper ideology. I believe in that party, and it means so long as I believe in Wiper, I should remain a Wiper, a Wiper member of Parliament. Now, what is happening in Jersey? People want to, to play the double standards. You know, the Bible is very clear. It says you can't be cold and hot at the same time. You can only be one. Choose one. And what members of parliament would want to do is to be in the middle line. Okay. That I can, I, like when Maura now is confessing that he's a member of Jubilee, while we know very well that he has already started championing, promoting the interest of another party called UDA, which is not even... We, we, and and the have not been declared. Okay. So procedurally, what Maura should have done is put a form of resignation from Jubilee. Right. Say that I no longer believe in Jubilee as a party, and because I don't believe in Jubilee as a party, I want to exit Jubilee. I, unfortunately, he's nominated. I don't know whether then would have been able to dominate him. Okay. But your fair process will demand that he goes through an election and then comes in through UDA. That's the fair process. But you know, we, we have we have. We have uh, politicians who are championing what I call po politics of deceit, politics of dishonesty. And to me, I think if we want to grow our democracy as a country, it's high time we started doing things right. For example, the, we, you talk about uh, the register managing the register, the register of members. It just uh, I would want to hear from uh, uh, Maura because he's my friend. Mm -hmm. Who would you want to manage the register of members of a political party? Because it's either register of political parties or IBC. IBC is supposed to manage elections, not, not, not party issues. So to me, I still believe the issue of management of members of our party register should be the register of political parties. Okay, so because you don't think the registrar can manipulate some of these party nominations and make them undemocratic? But you know, it's even very clear in this law, the law we are discussing, yeah. and I would want uh, uh, Maura to, to, to look at that close. It says, you know, you gave an example where, of where people go to our MPSA list, and enroll people to, yeah. to Paris. Yeah. Now, the same law we are discussing, which they are opposing, mm -hmm. is actually saying it is going to be illegal to register somebody in a political party without their authority. Okay. And if you do it, okay. then there, it's clearly stipulated what should happen to you. So just to me, I think let's just be objective, look at this law objectively. And if you really want to grow our political parties to be mature political parties, parties which participate in, in elections without any issues, this law, to me, is the law in the right direction. All right. And to love this country. Okay, okay. Uh, let, let's cross over to uh, the other guests before we get Maura's right of reply. Uh, definitely, Osotsi is joining us. And uh, just as Maura mentioned, you've definitely been on the receiving end as a nominated member of parliament. So I think the obvious question would be, do you believe this law will bring discipline to parties in terms of reeling in on errant members of parliament well, uh, Jesse, um, one of the people who think that uh, this bill is very progressive. Remember, I have been in the political party management uh, process for quite some time. Yeah. So I'm very well experienced in matters to do with the management of political parties. And I can tell you a lot of things which don't go right with political parties <coughs> will be resolved by this bill. For example, the controversial issue of uh, party membership being managed by the registrar. I think uh, we need to be very objective on this matter without necessarily taking stands which are aligned to our political uh, thinking. I will tell you, Jesse, that uh, Parliament uh, in 2019, they passed a law called the Data Protection Act. The Data Protection Act is uh, an international requirement that requires that uh, data uh, in custody of uh, data processors uh, and um, uh, all the other people involved in data must be managed in accordance with the international data management standards. 
And in that bill, we gave the registrar powers to manage data related to political parties. And at that point, there was no objection from anyone. But now, when this bill is trying to uh, expound on uh, that mandate in the Data Protection Act, you are seeing a lot of noises, uh, largely because uh, we have uh, individuals who are trying to make this law look bad. Uh, not because it has bad provision, but because of uh, one clause that talks about coalition parties, which uh, some people are very uncomfortable with. I would want to tell you that if we want to sort out the messes that we continue to see every election year when it comes to party primaries, we must start by dealing with the issue of management of member, membership, such that political parties should conduct their nomination based on the, uh, the members of that political party. We don't want a scenario where political parties have members, but when they go to conduct nomination, they go to IBC and they get the uh, voter register. Some of the people in the voter register are not members of that political party. Okay. So it is undemocratic to carry out party nomination using the voter register provided by IBC. So this particular process that has been defined in this bill will make it easy for political parties to conduct uh, party primaries based on the a verified uh, membership register. And, uh, you know, uh, there is no any other place we can take uh, management of uh, membership data apart from the Registrar of Political Parties. So let us have faith okay. in this office of the Registrar of Political Parties to empower them so that they manage membership data, but that management of membership data must be done within the law. First of all, the Data Protection Act, which we passed, and now the Political Parties Act that we have. And there are going to be regulations on how these things are going to be done. If you look at the bill, the bill proposes that there will be regulations on the issue of uh, party membership. So I don't think that's a major issue. I think the bone of contention in this bill is the issue of coalition political party, which uh, our brothers on the UDA side feel that... Uh, it will give an advantage to Azimio. Uh, but we are also telling them that this law can also benefit them. Because you've seen uh, UDA through the, its leader, the deputy president, in some areas they have been telling people that we are ready for partnership. I have seen when he comes to Western province, he has kept on saying he wants to court Mudavadi, he wants to court uh, Watangula. And these are our leaders who have their political parties. All right. How is it going to court them without a coalition? So even this law is also uh, very productive for all of us. It is only that there is a, a, a temporary feeling among the members of uh, UDA that this party will give an advantage to uh, Azimio. And again, we are asking Senate. I know today they will not do much because it's basically first reading. Uh, they, will be, or, or they may introduce a procedural motion, as uh, my friend Maura is saying, yeah. to try and reduce the period, uh, publication period, maybe to seven days, so that they give the committee the chance to conduct uh, public participation, participation and yeah. write a report okay. which will be uh, taken back All to right. Senate okay. for second reading. So we expect Senate to be very objective. Uh, we do not want to see the shenanigans that we saw when they were handling the Division of Revenue uh, bill, uh, where they went through 12 sittings. We want them to be very objective. Okay, and so the gains that have been made by the National Assembly should not be destroyed by the Senate. Okay, we'll definitely see how <coughs> the proceedings break down. But let's cross over to perhaps a member of the UDA party and get his own voice on that particular claim. Rakuya, is your issue just to do with the coalition political parties in terms of thinking it might give your competitors an advantage in one way or the other? Because I think right here on the show you've mentioned that this bill is definitely good for whichever side of the political divide. What's your take on this? Uh, thank you, Jesse. Uh, my concern is that uh, the bill 
uh, has already first and foremost undertaken a, uh, a point where it was very thorny because there was amendment uh, on the proposal where the, bo the, the, the bill was uh, intending to uh, be executed and it was, for was, was, was forcing the correction from the three months to election to six months. But that amendment uh, sealed through, and therefore uh, the current situation, if the Senate is not going to change the position, is that uh, the corrections will be supposed to be uh, at least closing doors at three months to election. Uh, that one was a thorny issue there before, because actually it was looking as if it was uh, intended ambush to ambush the political parties uh, who has not yet made up their mind on which way, whether it's a coalition way or whether it's an individual party way. Okay. Uh, number two is that uh, still the other than the area is that uh, we have been uh, uh, seeing uh, gray areas in, uh, in what we call uh, registrar's, political parties registrar office where uh, things uh, of, of manipulation has been there. And uh, it's an office that uh, which has not been learned, uh, uh, which has been uh, uh, learned very well or very smoothly. Uh, in times when, in times when, probably parties has issues, and we have an example of a jubilee party, a party which has up to date has never held its uh, uh, its national delegate conference to date, and nothing. He, uh, and the registrar of political parties has done nothing upon this. Also. There is uh, a, 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 a mature period that was agreed by the parties that uh, made up uh, the Jubilee Party, and that was, in fact, after after two, after three good years, the party ought to move to what we call a party primaries to get uh, to so that at least it can have what we call uh, elected party officials, which never be up to date. And therefore, those are grey areas where you cannot even today trust the same office that it will be, it will be able to stand by, uh, by the, the bill to the letter. Uh, but if that office can be able to clean itself and make things work as okay. required by the law, I think it, not everybody can be uh, uh, in trust with it. It's only that once, once beaten, twice shy. And therefore, the same office has been issued there before, and you, 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 you wonder whether the same office will be able to carry out the exercises of uh, party issues smoothly. Okay, interesting. And a uh, previous question was raised by Makali Mulu. Let, let me just raise it to Senator Mwaura, who is still with us. Who would you want to engage with the registrar of these political parties? Because he mentioned right now it's domiciled with the Register of Political Parties. The other option would be IEBC. But what's your take on that? I think it's more so, more so about the day-to-day -day politics of the Registrar mm. uh, of Political Parties. And it is true. Uh, I really have engaged in the past Lusindongo based on the fact that uh, I learned my lessons when I was uh, running to be a Deputy Secretary General of ODM. Uh, in 2014, you remember the famous uh, men in black in Kasarani? Yes. And then when I ran for MP Ruiru under the Jubilee Party. And so my idea of the party primaries bill was to ensure that there is fairness in party nominations because uh, there is no single political party that can stand test of time and say that they are as clean as uh, 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 Caesar's wife. Because they, they, there is always a shambolism around how political parties uh, you know, manage their elections. Why? Because they are formed too soon to elections. They don't have proper structures. Whatever actually you say right now, the two main uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, political formations is uh, the Hustler Nation versus Azimio. And if you look, it, we are just less, we actually we are uh, 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 six months and 30 days to the next general election. That is to mean uh, by the time you want to, them to, uh, to actually conduct a, a, a national plebiscite, uh, in the same capacity as IBC, they really don't have the, such capacity, uh, and let's not, let's not lie to each other. That is a problem, uh, and that is why uh, our political party primaries are, are the Waterloo, or many a great leader. And, and I want to say, therefore, the registrar of political parties was not necessarily the best candidate, uh, but because the system wanted her, she was appointed as a registrar. And if you remember Lucy Ndongo before, she was kept in an acting capacity 
and this is a way the executive is using okay. to buy loyalty uh, in, the, in the ORPP office. <laughs> if you look at the funding of the ORPP, uh, it is a highly underfunded office, yet it is a very critical one. I don't know why we never made the registrar of political parties an independent office like the DPP or the, uh, you know, so that then, or the IG, so that you have a six uh, year tenure and you are not subject to political machinations or you'll be dewhipped, you'll be done what. But right now, as we speak, the appointing authority has a lot of leverage on the registrar of political parties. And that is why this bill, much as it looks innocuous uh, to uh, the undiscerning, the truth of the matter is that it is, uh, we have seen a situation where, Jesse Roberts, there has been an even application of the law. Uh, for example, for me, I was being expelled from uh, uh, the Jubilee party unfairly and procedurally, and the registrar cooperated uh, with the Jubilee uh, machinations. Mm -hmm. Yet, the similar members who had shown uh, you know, support uh, to other candidates, like Maina Kamanda and Sakaja, they were never asked. So that is why we cannot trust this process. Remember, even when there were issues to do with the Jubilee party, uh, when the, the Secretary General of Jubilee was declaring the Deputy President to be persona non grata, in his own political party headquarters and the, change, uh, the changing of the uh, National Management uh, Committee members uh, of the, the registrar cooperated with the side of the executive. And so that kind of uh, partial, uh, you know, uh, application of the law, uh, selective application of procedures is why we know for sure for every political contest uh, there is a winner and a loser and there is a motive. And the motive here is not as good as it looks. And I, do, I really want to uh, remind my brother Godfrey Osoti because you and I have faced these challenges. By the way, I am the one who has held the record of being expelled by two political parties mm -hmm. and uh, even my seat declared vacant. So yeah. I know the pains uh, about uh, the, the idea of deeming where you go and, and get gutter press, uh, blogs to declare that uh, because of a statement that cannot be verified, that then you have crossed over to another political party and they, yet you also use the same, uh, same, you don't use the same standards on other people, uh, including party leaders. I think, personally, I want to say that uh, these bills need to be uh, uh, leg legislated for posterity. The, the problem with our process, uh, Jesse, yeah. is that we are reg legislating because of the 2022 politics. And remember, Krigler told us that the rules must be clear for every player two years before elections. But here we have a situation where uh, the rules are being changed less than seven months the, just the next general elections and to suit a certain political outcome. And I want to tell you, why not for the fact that OKA is being forced to join us in Mio, we will not have had this bill in December. And, and you can see the acrimony uh, yeah. and, 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 and um, the desecration of the image of parliament uh, is consistent with these special sittings of December. In 2014, if you remember the Security Laws Amendment Bill, and uh, Dr. Makali Mulu was with me, there was also another, uh, you know, uh, gang ho in Parliament. In fact, my court was actually torn and uh, buttons, uh, uh, you know, flared up when, when people are debating a bill that was supposed to be used against political opponents so that we have seen, uh, you know, people like uh, Mike Sonko being prosecuted on account uh, of the Terrorism Act. Can you imagine? So you make laws for your opponents. And even if you make a law that is supposed to be uh, evenly applied, okay. but it's only selectively, uh, you know, executed uh, to look at political... So when you talk about registrar managing party primaries, you will want to know, because of the fact that we had <coughs> strong agents in Kiamba, uh, we had strong agents in Georgia right. and other places that were able to support uh, the candidature of the deputy president, they now want to say, now we are the ones to determine who is the agent of, a, of, a, who is a, of the, the returning officer, who is, a, who is a party member, and yet we know very well, and please let me make this point, this Jesse, that if during the last general elections, what Jubilee did, and Kenyans need to know that, it's not that people went and registered as members. They just downloaded the IEBC uh, register of all the, the, the people who are registered in, in, in the Mount Kenya region and Rift Valley, totaling to 8 million. So members became, uh, people became members of the Jubilee Party by default. Yet it's the same process is being used to expel people when you don't agree with people politically. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Uh, thanks for giving us that take. So once beaten, twice shy. Makali, maybe. and that's what I get from Gakuya maybe, maybe. and Senator Mwaura, that the Office of the Register of Political Parties, mm. time and time again, has shown that it's perhaps not truly independent, that it serves the appointing authority that is the executive. Well, what's your take on that as we finalize on this? Uh, let me thank Mwaura for the first time because he has actually 
become more objective than just being political. Uh, the issue of the party primaries through the proposed bill which we discussed with the, the reserve political parties at that time yeah. is a very thorny issue. Uh, and I think what we need to do is to separate an office from the individual who is holding that office at any particular time. What is happening? Th there could be challenges in the current order of that office. From what Maura is saying from a personal experience mm -hmm. and what Ngakuya is saying from a personal experience. Yeah. But that does not mean that but that particular order will remain there forever. And I think that's why you, when you look at this bill, in addition to saying let them manage the party register, we also, through the bill, proposing that the registrar should also be involved in training, party engines will be involved in the, in, in the, in the primaries so that there will be a bit of capacity building from the same office. So actually what we are doing is we are putting very clear roles of that particular office when it comes to management of, management of party primaries. Mm -hmm. But I do agree, at times, you know, individuals are individuals and human is to error. So there's a situation where you could be acting at a, at a personal level and you know that the story of orders from above uh, well, I think what they are saying basically is there could be orders from above to this yeah. office yeah. which are not being made public. But the truth of the matter is at the end of the day, let's, let's legislate for the posterity so that whatever legal framework we put in place, Jesse, is a legal framework which will serve us today, serve us many, many years to come. And I want to remind them, uh, you know, the, the, this talk about we are all being pushed to as me is not true. Jesse, you know where I stand. We have one Kenya alliance. Mm -hmm. And as is one Kenya alliance, the reason why we are supporting this bill is also because we are going to form an alliance and alliances in the past have suffered challenges because of people not honoring okay. their words. So we want to make this structure such, a, such a, a solid structure so that it's moved to the future. If you decide to go alone, you have no problem. But if you decide to go through an alliance, then uh -huh. you, you are clear as, a, as, as, as people who are in this alliance or now you will operate the, the, the rules of the game. Mm. And I think basically that's what we are saying. For now, let's just forget about this, our own political interests and look at these progressive proposals and where they are going to serve Kenyans for the better, we support them. Okay. Where we think things are not working in yes, there's no harm saying, objectively, I don't support this thing, even okay. though it's been proposed by, by my party. Okay. But you know the challenge we have in Parliament, and this is what I want my colleagues to address, because we are, it will all come back to us again. Mm -hmm. You know, just what is happening is, in Parliament, we have people who are just heckling, we have hecklers. People who don't allow solid debate to take place, intelligent debates. People who just shout, sit down, sit down. So, so through the shouting, Kenyans don't get the really the real the essence of some of these proposals. Okay. okay. I wish we could just allow sober debate, where, where Maura is given his time to talk without any interference. I'm given my time to push my case, mm -hmm. and then whoever convinces the majority of the MPs wins the, the, the day. But it's a situation where before you start talking, people are shouting at you, others are abusing you, others are throwing you water, water bottles. bottles. Yeah. So, so, so to me, this is not what we expect in, a, in August House. It's an honorable house. Let's allow people to be. And I think, you know, just when you speak, we're going physical. It means that the intellectual capacity or the intellectual connection okay. is been lost. Well, let's see. I, I don't think we need to lose uh, that. See, well, let's see if the Senate will lead by example. Jesse, let's Jesse, see. Jesse, Jesse yeah, sure. al allow me to chip in on Definitely. the issue of party dis discipline now that my friend Maura has talked about it. <laughs> I, I think uh, looking at the bill very carefully, you notice that there is an improvement on the issue of uh, how to manage party discipline. Because currently in the Political Parties Act, it is very vague on how that is handled. And uh, that gives uh, party leadership the powers to try and uh, frustrate members, to try and intimidate members, the way it has happened to me and uh, Mwaura. But uh, this particular amendment in the Political Parties Amendment Bill, it's very clear that uh, the party constitution has to be followed. If you look at the judgments in uh, my case and even Maura's case, yeah. you realize that uh, one of the grounds they cited was uh, the inability to follow the party constitution, the procedures stipulated in the various political party uh, constitution. Now, this bill proposes that uh, any discipline that is meant to members of political party has to be in line 
with the party constitution and uh, the provisions of the national constitution. Uh, and I think that protects both sides. It protects the party leadership who can become rogue uh, and also the members. Uh, that is why I, I am a victim of uh, uh, unorthodox uh, ways of trying to discipline members uh, and I'm supporting this provision because the party constitution must be followed. What is required is that for the registrar of political parties to ensure that constitutions of political parties are uh, designed in line with the national constitution. So that those freedoms which are in the national constitution, like uh, political rights under Article 38, and also the provisions of fair administrative action principles, can uh, be instilled in political party constitution. And that will uh, ensure that uh, when members are disciplined, they are disciplined fairly, they are heard, and uh, procedures in the party constitutions are followed. Uh, on the issue of membership, yeah. uh, one issue that I had forgotten is that uh, it is time we must make our political party membership driven. So that members, one, they contribute to the funding of political parties, Two, they are involved in decision-making of political parties. Most of these political parties you see around, I'm told they're around 80, are a briefcase political parties for individuals waiting to dish out certificates during elections. We need to depart from that and say, these are the members of ODM. These are the members of UDA. These are the members of uh, Jubilee. These are members of WIPA. These are members of ANC. So it is very clear. But right now, you ask these political parties, majority of them, who are your members? They cannot tell you. Because they just went and picked uh, M-Pesa records, or they went uh, to some uh, building, uh, that entry list, they compiled it and made it their membership register. So we need to make, as part of the political party hygiene okay. in this country, yeah. we need to ensure that our parties are a membership driven political parties and that is why i fully support the provisions which are there and uh, the doubts around uh, registrar and the mischief she's likely to to do i think is ne neither here or there because the registrar is compelled under the data protection act to ensure that any changes made to the data must be in line with the provisions of data protection. Well noted. Gakui, I'll give you the final take as we finalize on this. Oh, thank you, Jesse. Yeah. My final take is that uh, uh, laws are being uh, made to make sure that there is a flexibility uh, in terms of uh, making things work. And uh, in this country, we have seen uh, parties which are very seasonal, that uh, you have a party only to take the presidential candidate to, uh, to an election. And after uh, his term ends, then that party dies. And that culture has taken us for long. I think also it is, it is important at this particular time, and, uh, time to have a, a clear way on how parties can survive even after the party leaders who are proposed to be the owners of the party. And I think that uh, if we can be able to follow the policies uh, casted to uh, protect the parties to the letter. I think we can have what we call a smooth riding of parties even after uh, certain elections or uh, presidential elections. Uh, you, you, you take, I take a sample of a party like PNU. Uh, party like PNU took pre President Kibake to the, uh, to the election and <coughs> after, his, uh, after his exit, that party automatically dies. Then we have uh, the TNA we took the head of state, uh, head of state to uh, the first term, and uh, after that first term, it dies. And now we have an, a catcher of Jubilee, which have taken the head of state to his second, uh, his, his second uh, term, okay. and it's almost now dying. Okay. So that catcher is not a very good catcher. I think we need to embrace catchers of where parties can be strong parties, and parties can belong to members. But currently, you find that our culture here is totally uh, is completely <coughs> different, different scenario, where you find that parties are being owned and parties are like uh, a private, uh, private, uh, private, uh, private uh, properties of uh, some individuals, where the decisions are only made by few, 
and leaving every other decision making from the wider scope of the party uh, membership. And this is uh, the, the line where we, we, we would like to see this going a different direction if we would like to have parties of future. Okay, so do you think this bill will sort of bring sanity in terms of what you're talking about, parties of the future? Can we legislate sanity into our party politics? I believe there the, the are sections that actually <laughs> seems to, uh, seem to look uh, and uh, give uh, uh, an indication that okay. actually there can be that provision to protect the parties in future. But what I, my worry is that uh, the manner in which we have just put all these powers under one roof of party of what political parties registrar. To me, that's a big suspect. And uh, 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 just say so you realize that, that I have, as I explained there before, was beaten twice shy. And this particular office has not shown Kenyans any independence in terms of executing duties, its duties fairly. And uh, that is only the fear I have. But when things are un were under the roof of electoral commission, nobody had, uh, had any fear because that particular commission is an independent commission which has not interfered with those, the list of nomination okay. and equally the, the list of party membership. But we, uh, we, it's a matter that we wait to see whether that particular office will serve the Kenyans in an independent or unfair way. Well, we'll definitely wait and see, even as we expect the first reading on the floor of the House introduced by the Senate Majority Leader. Remember, not a lot of debate will happen, even as we expect the Senate Committee on Justice, Legal Affairs and Human Rights to take up that particular matter for even public participation thereafter. Well, we have a lot more to talk about. Let's take a short break right here on Morning Prime. When we come back, the utterances made by Meru Senator Mithika Linturi have definitely caused a political storm. We'll try and encompass what has happened thereafter, equally picking the thoughts of the leaders right here in studio even as we take a look at the uh, movements of the political leaders just yesterday uh, we saw Raila Odinga speak in Kajiado County and the deputy president was equally in Bomet. This and much more coming your way stay with us we'll be back after this short break.